Gamescom begins! And Mass Effect ends. It's Monday the 21st of August and this is Screenplay Patch Notes! I'm Steph. I'm Nick and here are the big stories from the weekend. Spectacularly reviled Mass Effect title Andromeda will no longer see single player support. The game, which chronicled a new adventure set in the Mass Effect universe, was immediately panned upon release due to a host of bugs and rather clunky, but often humorous, facial animations. The game will still see multiplayer support from Bioware, with new multiplayer missions and character kits on the way. I mean, it's not really surprising that they're calling time on the single player. No. I think Bioware is a developer we all expect so much from, so when this game came out, so hilariously flawed, we were all just, we felt really let down by it's it. It's very interesting as well about the, when do you call it quits? Mm. Like when do you take a game off life support, unplug the console, so to speak? Uh, I didn't expect it to be this soon, but it's probably, it's probably the right move because they just sink money into something that isn't gonna see a huge return. Yeah, and it's sad because, you know, they did release a patch that cleared up a lot of those issues quite mm. soon after the game was released, but by then the damage had been done, memes had gone viral, and you know, no one was really committed to playing this game anymore. And from what I understand, a lot of the missions were quite lackluster anyway, but yeah. I wouldn't know because I gave up after like an hour of playing, like the rest of the fickle game <laughs> population. <laughs> well, I give it maybe six years until we see a new Mass Effect then. Really? Eight years? Yeah, no, it's definitely coming back. They just gotta get, we just gotta forget about this one first. Yeah, right. Moving on, and it looks like the Nintendo Switch could get a homebrew modded software. I mean, not officially, obviously. Hackers would put it on there. Nintendo's not putting that out. According to those hackers and exploiters who are hard at work on it, quote, prior to 3.0.1, the service manager SM built-in system module treats a user as though it has full permissions if the user creates a new SM colon port session but bypasses initialization. This is due to the other SM command skipping the service ACL checks for PIDs, and then it looks like it's a little house, maybe it's a pointy arrow and an equal sign, seven, i.e. all kernel bundled modules that skipping the initialization command leaves the PID field uninitialized. So I have absolutely no idea what any of that means, but they are frothing over it in the homebrew <laughs> community. They are so excited about what's happening. Did you ever, have you ever homebrew modded like a console? No, oh, no. I no. mean, I think maybe I um, jailbroke a phone once, Oh! but that's about as far as I've ever gone. What a rebel. Uh, I mean, obviously homebrew sort of stuff has been a bit of a gray, area legally, yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, hypothetically speaking, if some... I would say grey erring towards black. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's, yeah, it's like a darker, it's like a charcoal. Uh, <laughs> but uh, hypothetically speaking, if some handsome internet person had once modded uh, with a homebrew OS uh, his PSP, he, he would have found that that was actually a really delightful thing to do and opened up all sorts of new interesting things to do on it. But you know, some people have managed to get jobs that way. That is true, that's how I got this job. <laughs> Moving on, and Arc developer Studio Wildcard are the latest devs to call out Sony for not supporting cross-platform play. Lead designer Jeremy Stieglitz was answering a question on Twitter where one person asked, will there ever be a way Xbox and PS4 can play together? Stieglitz responded, we have it working internally, but currently Sony won't allow it. Sad face. Mmm, same story out of Rocket League developer Psyonix. Yeah, this is constantly talking about Sony doesn't want it and they're all being very polite about it, but yeah, I assume it's a load of BS, right? Like Sony have come out and said, oh, we want to make our marketplace safe for kids but they just don't want to like give the option for people to buy an Xbox. Yeah, totally. Which like makes a lot of sense from a money-making perspective. All about that dollar dollar bill I or get that it. Japanese yen. I get it. Yeah. But there but was it, a but, right? <laughs> but it just looks bad when they're the ones that are not coming to the party where we all get to hold hands and just you know, we don't see color or <laughs> yeah, platform yeah, or totally. anything, and we can all exist in harmony and just play on whatever platform we want. And just kill whoever we want on They're whatever like platform. They're like the racists of the game world. <laughs> that's, that's, there you go, what a call out. Uh, and the, the, I think that uh, Microsoft though, they don't really need any help underwhelming people because they're doing a good job by themselves. That was a segue to the discussion topic. And then nailed it. Gamescom has kicked off for 2017 with a kind of press conference from Microsoft. So Gamescom is often treated like a mini E3, mm. but Microsoft didn't have a whole lot to say. It's very disappointing when companies do this. Because, so, you know, I was really looking forward to Gamescom because it's bigger than E3. It's this enormous event, right? And then Microsoft come in and they have this press conference and it's like, why did you do this? 
there's barely anything to talk about. They, they spoke about two things really, the games and then the Xbox One X. And, and my understanding as well is that E3 tends to be more of a big marketing push, whereas Gamescom is more kind of developer fueled and you get yeah. more info from behind the scenes with developers sort of talking about their experience making cool new stuff. Yeah, it's just weird that you would spend all this money on a press conference, all the time sorting it out and not really have too much to talk about. What they did talk about, uh, there was a trailer for Assassin's Creed Origins, which you're still... Are you still, or did here's, this one win you over? Here's the thing. Oh my God, here's is it because Cleopatra's in it? I, no. Is it because Julius Caesar's in it? Just wait. Is it because there's a, you know, like a scorpion in it? Yeah, maybe. Okay. okay, so I'm sick of Assassin's Creed. We all are. But I love history. Oh, we all do. And no other game places you into such like wonderfully recreated historical mm. cities. Yeah. Where you get free reign to free run <laughs> Did you think this through? No, but I'm just... <laughs> just going with stay it. Stay with me, yeah. stay with me. And I think I will just always play them because the games will keep getting visually more exciting and the cities will keep getting bigger and more spectacular. So however much I hate the grinding of collecting a million different things and doing the same missions over and over and all yeah. of that stuff, I think I will always play these games because I just... How incredible to be able to do that. That's a really good point. You're trapped. I'm trapped. Like, where else are you going to experience these giant old worlds mm. that aren't fantasy? Yeah. Yeah. And, and are so open world as well. Because there'll be games, I'm sure, that are set... Your you Uncharted know, style. Yeah. Like, linear through. That, that take you to really incredible locations. But to give you free reign of those locations... It, That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're all going to buy it. We're such suckers. We're such <laughs> history suckers. That's true. Here's my question. Are you going to buy the definitive edition of Recall? No. All right. So I was, Steph's no, I was super excited about Recall, but I played it and I found it very grindy. Oh, it was so boring. Uh, they also spoke more about uh, PUBG, PUBG, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. It's Battlegrounds. Not pub, it's not PUBG. It's PUBG. Let's just get rid of that. PUBG. What's this the is like world? the esports capital E type whole thing. Okay, yeah. you say PUBG. Yep. Yeah. Or, or you, you say Battlegrounds. Or you say Battlegrounds. Okay. I'll Think, stick with Battlegrounds. Like you can't say G as its own thing because that's the second half it's of not, the word. It's not player unknown battle colon grounds. Yes. Yes. You can't say PUBG. Yeah. It's PUBG or Battlegrounds. Sure. Only two acceptable terms. And that's mainly what they spoke about in the Microsoft <laughs> press conference about that. Uh, so obviously, you know, player unknowns is coming to that. Everyone's very excited about it. Uh, the coolest thing, though, uh, games-wise, that they spoke about, they premiered Jurassic World Evolution. Mm. So this is like... Planet Coaster with Jurassic mm. Park version. Exactly. Though, the thing about Jurassic Park is every time they build one of these parks, something goes terribly wrong. And it's like, did we not learn from last time? But isn't that going to be the joy of the game? Is that You what... put little electric fences around everything, and then the power goes down, and then there's a small girl who has to climb the fence. Or was it a boy? Uh, well, both of them are climbing. It was Newman. And then the boy was like holding on to it. It was Newman. And then he goes, one. It was the little boy. It was the little two. boy. Yeah. And then he got <laughs> shocked off. And then Newman caught him. Yeah, that's the best part of Jurassic. Where, yeah. where shit goes wrong. So yeah. hopefully shit goes wrong in this. And then, uh, but then they switched over to the Xbox One X. And they spoke about the Xbox One X and how cool it's going to be. Mm. So there's a Project Scorpio version. It's basically just an Xbox One X and it has a bit of green on it. It says Project Scorpio. Looks a bit crap, but I kind of want it. They're also doing a uh, Minecraft themed version of the Xbox One S. Oh, yeah. Which would be a spectacular present for kids. That one looks so cool. And Minecraft aficionados, of course. Of course. But would you ever get a console that was themed to one particular game? Oh, God, no. No, because <laughs> what if you end up hating that game? Yeah. Like you I move mean... on from it and then suddenly it's like, oh, good, I've got a show. Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments Xbox One. <laughs> that's exactly what I want. I mean, like, that's like serious commitment to that one game. To be like every other game you play is still wrapped. Wrapped. In a, in a, <laughs> yeah, totally. in a skin of a different game. 100%. <laughs> uh, and then finally, they also announced a, a bunch of the titles that will get support for the Xbox One X when it comes out. So, you know, 4K and the better textures and all that sort of shit that's going to come along. Uh, usual suspects, Halo, uh, Gears of War, Forza, those sort of things. Uh, surprisingly, no Call of Duty or Overwatch. So the two big competitive shooters right now, you're not going to see any bump in either of those, uh, you know, as of now. But is that because it's just too complicated to kind of implement? that kind of overhaul for multiplayer, online multiplayer games? Is oh, there's I mean, maybe maybe just for the online stuff, but there were lots of ones there that had online support. Like Gears has multiplayer modes. Mm. I don't know why, why you're mm. not seeing that. I don't know whether or not it's some balancing thing or the companies just couldn't be bothered. Mm. Who knows? But regardless, this is something you should know before you spend a bunch of money. But do you want to spend a bunch of money on games? Here's what you can soon play. Here's what you can soon play, yeah. I was like, where are you? What segue is this? It was that one. It's Monday the 21st of August and here's what you can soon play. 
Kicking things off this week is episode 3 of Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy. Staying true to its 80s pop rock theme, the episode is called More Than a Feeling and gives you more of those feelings of choosing the wrong dialogue option and ruining your whole save file. Boston may know lost love, but they don't know true heartache. The Escapist 2 slides down your sewage pipe to freedom on PS4 and Xbox One on the 22nd and then lands shit-stained and satisfied on your PC on the 23rd. And the 23rd is a big day for PlayStation owners because Uncharted The Lost Legacy is here. Astoundingly underhyped and marketed, this new adventure in the Uncharted verse aims to give one of gaming's greatest narrative action games a new direction. As a fan, I hope it succeeds, and as a critic, it kind of does? But more of that on this week's episode of Screenplay. Thursday 10pm on 7 mate. But if game narratives are just unsatisfying white noise to you, perhaps the whirring white noise of a thirsty V6 engine is more your thing. Formula One 2017 brings all the circuits, drivers and teams from this year's season into your dirty little racing hands. Also on the 25th, Madden NFL 2018 is the 35th installment in the series, but as I only discovered my love for the game last year, it's sort of like the second game to me. And let me tell you, for such a new series, it's an astoundingly functional American football sim. And finally on the 25th, Minecraft Story Mode rolls up on the Switch. I'm not the biggest fan of this game, but I am excited to see Telltale on the Switch. That's what you can soon play what are your picks? Let us know in the comments. So lots of options there for your gaming pleasures. Stephanie, what is your gaming pleasure? I mean, I think it's obvious. It's Uncharted The Lost Legacy, and I don't want to spoil what I think of it for the review, but it yep. was probably the greatest game I played this year. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, so mine, you know, obviously mine would be Uncharted as well. You can't not recommend Uncharted, but I'm also going to give a shout out to Madden because I'm going to put many more hours into Madden than I am Uncharted. It's a bit of a... Bit of a mismatch there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm mean, just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to appeal nice, to everybody. Yeah, good, 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 um, good way to try and balance it out, though. You failed, but it was good. <laughs> trying to balance it out. Uh, your opinions are interesting, but they're invalid. Uh, okay, moving on. Yes, it's prize time. Prize time. Uh, let's kick things off with the Easter egg hunt. I am. So on last week's episode of Screenplay, we uh, changed the set. We altered something slightly, and we asked you to find out. Uh, what it was. That's very true, and Luke Coombe spotted it. Was it Rabid Mario? Yes, it was. And as per the terms and conditions of that competition, here is the bag of hair trimmings that you will receive that we no longer talk about because it nearly ruined a friendship. Mm, mm. But what a piece of history. What a piece of history you now own, Luke. Uh, punch in on one, uh, and now punch in on this face, which is just so scared of Steph. So, can I just take this opportunity to say that Please. some people. Yeah that I was talking to on my stream yep. um, said what's something that you could do to like balance the friendship oh, yeah. at, like, as, as a form of payback. Yeah, yeah. One person Penance. said, one person said, delete Nick's Hearthstone account, which I thought was a little excessive. What the fuck? <laughs> I said, why don't I put some of that like hair wax on your leg and wax a strip of hair off your leg? So that way you removed yes. hair from me, and then I'm removing hair from you, and it would also be equally as painful, but just physically painful, not so emotionally painful. I mean, I'm saying yes. I mean no, but I'm willing to do it. And then we can film it, and it'll be hilarious! I just want to point out, I had no idea this was coming. <laughs> do you have the wax here, or this is going to be a later No, thing? but we'll do it la a later, later time. Alright. Because we'll make a whole thing of it. Oh, good. But now you have an opportunity to get excited. Get excited. <laughs> P.S. I have never waxed anything ever. <laughs> like myself. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, cool. Uh, so moving on now, uh, we've got uh, this week's competition, which we we're running. So the good people at EvaTech uh, gave us an AeroCool Thunder X3 gaming chair. That's from EvaTech Custom Computers. Uh, what we needed you to do was take this image of a very limber body and uh, do something fun with it. And you did! Oh, this is okay. I know I say this all the time. Every and time. I say this every single time. But this one's now, this one's my new favorite. Well, I think it's because we stepped up from, you know, we started with Photoshop and then it went to drawings and now we're just on to full on craft mode. Yeah. So and people were saying that they didn't feel confident being able to use Photoshop and they wanted more ways to be able to do stuff. You can use any medium. And I think people have now proven that there are so many different ways you can recreate these images. Shabam, indeed. So we've got our <laughs> runners up. Uh, our, our, our forever runner up, always a bridesmaid, never the bride, Emma Bugs. Bugsy, one day you will probably win something. She made, she knitted a me! 
Oh, yeah, that's so cute. She even got the underwear. Yeah. She went purple. It's actually grey, but it's probably just the colour grey. <laughs> Look at your face. Look at how happy the little face is. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that's so cool that someone made something. Kabam! Lisa Cunningham! That's made out of plastic bags. Plastic bags. What a great use for plastic bags. And recycling. And turning, recycling. Turning plastic bags into art. And one day, hopefully, that little me will choke and kill a turtle. And it looks like you're hanging off a little doorknob. I am so hanging off like a little a, doorknob. A, a little home decoration. Look at that. I hope it stays there. Uh, and then finally, Erica Crandall. And then this is a felt me. Oh, you made a felt. Even nailed the underwear again. They all got the underwear. You know Very what I love the most about this felt one is the hair. Look at that. That Look is some the texture. textured ass hair. Mm. Uh, so Erica and Lisa and Emma, you've won nothing. We have nothing for you, but I would love if you sent those in because we can put them here in the same way that we're still waiting on that hair, beard, miles thing to come. Uh, you know, we can put them on the set. And, that's and we'll and that's feature them on our Instagram account. And, and we'll do that as well. Uh, but there had to be a winner. There always has to be a winner. This was amazing. This is legit. This one came in from Jerome Phelps. What did Jerome do? Jerome made a game. Jerome full on made a video game. <laughs> uh, we, we'll Which play. you can play. You can play. We'll put the link uh, in the description right now, so you can go play it. It's a parkour swinging game. He even has sound effects. Uh, let's just play a little of it. <laughs> the sound effects are the best bit. The sound effects are the best bit. We'll play a bit. I said hit the button. Hit the button. Oh, work up a sweat. Oh, work up a sweat. Oh, no, work up a sweat. Oh, work up a sweat. No, I... No, I... No, I... Oh, oh work up a sweat. So just quickly, the earliest he could have heard about that competition was like 10.30 on Thursday night, right? That entry came in at 5.30 on Friday morning. <laughs> so he stayed up overnight and made a video game. That's so good. That's well so done. good. Uh, congratulations, Jerome. You have won yourself an Aero Cool Thunder X3 gaming chair thanks to EvaTech. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Jerome and EvaTech. If you don't have a gaming chair but you want one, check out EvaTech Custom Computers because maybe the gaming chair will give you the power you need to win next week's and competition. And those are the chairs we all use here in the office as well. Absolutely. Uh, and then uh, all the pictures that were submitted will be up on our Facebook page in a big gallery. Well, that's it for today's show. Coming up later this week, though, we've got a little more daddy coming your way. Fiddly dee. Oh, I had something to say. Sorry, I was so distracted by the <laughs> Irish. And on screenplay on TV on Thursday night, we give our full review of Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I check out Marvel Defenders and see whether Iron Fist can ruin this one too. And we chat with Quake player Daniel D'Souza, who won entry to the Quake Champions $1 million tournament at QuakeCon, playing with over 200 ping. That's a lot of ping, and that is Thursday night, 10 p.m. on 7 May. You can, of course, follow Screenplay in all of these places. Details are in the description below. That's it for the show today, but we will uh, leave you with one of your great clips. Yes, uh, Blinky was playing Bloodborne and managed to pull off this sensational boss kill straight out of a Wolfgang Peterson film. Thanks for sending that in, Blinky, but don't be shy, everyone else. If you've got a cool clip you want featured on the show, send us a clip on Twitter using the hashtag ScreenplayMyClip. Yes, and you can send it to the Screenplay Twitter uh, at ScreenplayAU or at Hexdef or at NickBoy. Yes, you can. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I'm going to wax your leg. Oh, God. I'm going to wax your leg. So many regrets. <laughs> so many regrets. I'm pretty, I've just seen them do it on TV. But I'm pretty sure there is a certain way you have to rip it as are you, well. Are you going to do it the, the opposite of that way? Oh, shit. It's teamwork. I want them to do this. Right. At some point. Like Vogue? Let's do this. Like, you know. Oh, like, like I'm going to go this way, stop, break it, break a neck. All that stuff. Start your shirt.